everyone, welcome. This is Melissa Armo with a stock swoosh and I'm reviewing year to date 2019. So we're almost at the end of the third month of the year, first quarter of the year. And well, this is a very interesting year because in starting 2019, the market rallied at the end of last year and has almost rallied straight up uh, through the better part of the beginning part of this year. Uh, so market has not had really that much of a volatile year so far to start. However, that being said, I think that it does going forward because so many people now are going to start to jump in and think bullish, bullish, bullish. And even though the market is bullish, don't expect necessarily that it's going to be straight up from now until the end of time. <laughs> so I think that's what uh, tends to fool people. So some of these trades are short, some are longs. Let's go over them. Again, these are the day trades only, not the options trades, and we'll do a separate tracking for that. So this is an advanced trader risk. You can risk an advanced amount. You can risk a beginner amount. It's whatever you can afford. If you would like to ask me about that with the size of your account, feel free. So tracking so far, year to date, 73,630. Let's go over it. If you have any questions, you can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com or call me at 929-3200-GAP, follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. So it is coming up, the next earnings season starts in April. It's the end of March, it's not earnings season right now. There's sporadic earnings here and there, but for the most part, earnings season is a time where there you can make a lot of money when most stocks report earnings. Apple, Amazon, Google, all the things that you know of that move the market, they have big moves too. And so most of the stocks that we're doing in the room really are things that you would know that you've heard of companies, things that you buy products and services from. Uh, let's take a look at it. So off the first part of the year in January, SPY first trade was a loser, second one winner. Sometimes I do a retake, I teach that in the class. Then closed, I was sick in January. Lulu was a winner, Netflix was a really nice winner on the 15th. SIG was a loser, then the second trade and the third trade were winners in SIG. AXP was a loser on the 18th and the Q's was a winner on the 18th. Market closed the 21st, SWK was a beautiful gap on the 22nd, COF was a good one, NKC was a loser, QQQs was a winner, Starbucks was a winner, small one on the 25th, CAT was a winner, that was a nice gap too. Uh, the 29th, GME was a winner, solid move. And then the 30th, T, first trade loser, second one small winner, Q's first trade loser, second one winner, SPY winner, this is on January 30th, and to close out January, X was a winner, Q's was a winner, and V was a loser. No trades in the first and the fourth and off the fifth. Again, I use my method. I use my strategy. If there isn't anything that meets my criteria, then I don't do anything. That's part of being disciplined as a trader and following a set system per day, which I only do my golden gap system. I don't do anything else, whether it's options or day trades. Then the sixth EA was a loser. Twitter was a nice one on the seventh. Carb was a loser. First trade, second trade was a retake and worked out beautifully. The 11th, no trades. UAA was a loser. Guild was a winner. Spy was a winner on the 12th. Tiva was a loser. Spy was a loser. Second trade, big winner on the 13th. NTAP just did not work out. Both trades losers. MGM was a winner and Cisco was a loser on the 14th. And Spy was a nice winner on the 15th. There's been quite a few market trades in here now that I'm looking back at this. The 18th, the market was closed. 19th was WMT. That was a good solid uh, move. Didn't have the follow through on the daily chart, but on the day was decent. 20th was CVS, first trade loser, second trade winner. DPZ was a beautiful gap on the 21st. 22nd was KHC, 25th room closed, 26th cat was a loser, HD loser, SJM was a loser, WT was a winner on the 27th, and the last day of the month was a very nice one in HPQ. Then the SPY, first trade loser, second one winner on the 1st to start out the month of March. Q's was a loser on the 4th. TV day off the 5th. 6th trip did not work out. Loser, target, Two trades, first one loser, second one winner. That just didn't do what I wanted it to on that day on the target. KR was a nice, solid, quick one on the seventh. Cost was a very good gap uh, for the option and the day trade. First trade was a stop, though, and the second one was a big winner on the eighth. The eleventh, no trades. Twelfth, stitch fix didn't work. Either shot in that. That was a long. They both stopped. The thirteenth off, DG. First trade, small loser. Second trade, really nice winner. That was one of the nicest shorts so far in March. 15th, no trades. 18th, OSTK, small loser, spy loser. Facebook, really nice winner. That dropped all day. DSW was a solid gap in the 19th. The 20th, FDX was really bizarre, quite frankly. Uh, first trade dropped, had a move. If you held it, stopped. Then, again, secondary move, piecemealed out of it. Partial winner, partial loser. GS was a loser on the 21st, and CSIQ was a winner. So all in all... 
when you look at the period from January till March, it's really obvious the days that there was many, many easy things to do are smooth, fast moves. And really, it's, it's about what you're going to do with your day. Are you going to hold it to the target? Are you going to get out fast? Are you looking for one risk unit? Are you looking for the target? How much are you going to risk? Are you going to get out halvesies? All of these things should be in your trading plan. And again, if you have questions, you can ask me. Personally, I like to do the morning, and I do like to get out fast, but I like to give sometimes something a little bit of room so it can get a little bit going, not just a baby amount. I don't like to scalp. I like to get a move in something. I call it the money move, and I'll talk about that more in the next webinar. But for those of you that are asking, what is an advanced trader risk? Anywhere from $1,500 to $2,000 is an advanced trader risk. Now, this doesn't mean you have to risk that. You could risk $100 a trade. You could risk $200 a trade. Again, it has to do with the size of your account and also your buying power margin. And you might have more margin than sometimes you can even use if the stop happens to be wide in something. And for example, if it's a dollar, you normally only risk $100 when you can only take 100 shares. Ultimately, if you want to work for yourself, it, it is the best thing that you can do. It is a lot of fun to work for yourself. It doesn't mean that you're not going to have challenges in certain days. That's part of the, the uh, I guess, the, the balance. And you have to look at yourself and you have to say, you know what, I've got the confidence, I've got the knowledge, I've got the right information, and in, ultimately in the end it's worth it to work for yourself. Even though some days it may seem hard work, it definitely, definitely is worth it because in the end you have freedom. Freedom of time, you only report to yourself, you do have to be an independent person to work for yourself, and that's part of having a strategy you follow, being strict with it, a money management plan and being strict with it, and also really focusing in the morning on what you're doing. Again, like I said, I, I never do anything where I'm not ready the gap. I do look at everything pre-market or at the post-market and rate the stocks that we're trading ahead of time to predict the moves that they're going to make and the choices of the stocks that we're going to pick and do. I teach my method in a class. Again, this is for day trading, or you can use it for swing or options trading. But all of these trades were day trades. I do have an options letter that's a separate program, a separate service that you can sign up for. But if you want to learn the system that I use, you can only learn that in the Golden Gap course, and you can only join the live trading room after you've taken the Golden Gap course. So the class is March 23rd and 24th from 9 to 5 Eastern time. Cost of the class is $59.99 US dollars. Class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. Email me if you would like to sign up. Deadline is March 22nd. I'm doing a 24-hour special just to help people get ramped up here for the next earnings season, which again begins in April. It's one year free in the trading room. This is only for 24 hours. Deadline is March 22nd. That's it. The class is online. You must sign up by March 22nd. The class is this weekend, the 23rd and 24th. You would get one year free in the trading room if you signed up. And you would do the class this weekend. This is a huge savings because the room is normally $3,600 a year. Don't miss out on this. You would get all the trade calls that I just did and going forward for another year. So I'm really looking forward to April to see what really happens with the market, particularly because we've had this rally and to see where the market goes from here. I think April is going to be a great month. I'm looking forward to it. I've been very, very focused in the last week. I will continue to be so throughout the rest of the year. And if you have any more questions, don't hesitate to email me at melissa at the stockswish.com. Thanks, everyone.